In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, our one true God, greetings to all. Thank you all for taking the time to tune in. Now we come to some contemporary issues. Um, this past week, Patriarch Bartholomew, Patriarch Bartholomew, who has a, dur a jurisdiction over a very small area in Turkey. The Christians have been more or less decimated. They left, which was very smart for them, because of the oppression of the Muslim state. He also, though, has jurisdiction over a place called Mount Athos. Mount Athos is the bastion of orthodoxy. It has that reputation of being mm, probably the most holy place in orthodoxy. It has 20 major monasteries all around the peninsula. Let us put up a, a map of Mount Athos. And of course, we, being monastics and even monastics from Mount Athos, <clears throat> have great reverence for the Holy Mountain. But there's been some news lately. <clears throat> so let's give some background. Should I name all the monasteries, the 20 monasteries? The monks of Mount Athos are always looking very carefully at bishops, that they keep the faith, that they don't say anything that would renounce orthodoxy, that would jeopardize not only the bishop's salvation, but even the monks who are in communion with them. So they've always watched closely that the bishops are always on the straight and narrow road to life. But in 1965, yes, in 1965, <clears throat> The Patriarch of Constantinople became a, um, a person called Athenagoras. And there's rumors flying around that the guy was a Mason. And, of course, it got confirmed. But then he started talking not like a true bishop. So uh, that was in 1948 he became Patriarch. And as we said... With the help of Truman, a Mason, and Ataturk, a Mason in Turkey, and being flown from Washington to Constantinople on a plane called Air Force One of the United States Air Force, <clears throat> thanks to Truman. So I guess the monks of Mount Athos are scratching their head and they say, oh, what kind, what kind of misery are we going to get from this person? So, for a few years, okay, he was acting up, but didn't say anything drastic or do anything so drastic that would cause an earthquake, a spiritual earthquake on Mount Athos. But, in 1965, on December 7, this Athenagoras got it into his little brain that he and the Pope are going to lift the anathemas against each other. And that caused a catastrophe in the Orthodox Church. It caused our Metropolitan, Philaret, to say, just you wait, what kind, what, who do you think you are to can, that you lift an anathema? And he was waiting. What other bishops are there in the world? They're going to say, yes, <clears throat> we are not going to accept this. No other bishops other than the bishops of the Russian church. 
But on Mount Athos, what do you think it did to the monks who were looking always, you know, the, the bishops must keep the faith or else they would be rebuked. It caused great turmoil on Mount Athos. Mount Athos has 2,000 monks, give or take hundreds as, as time goes on. At that time, they had 2,000 monks. And I bet you if they took a census of all those that would agree with Athenagoras, 90% would say, away with him. We don't want him. So immediately, Mount Athos, monks stopped commemorating him in the liturgy. The first big monastery to said, that's enough, we had, an enu we had enough of this man, was Simenopetra. And other monasteries started to follow them and saying, <clears throat> we also are going to stop commemorating him. Well, Athenagoras didn't feel good with this. <clears throat> So he put pressure, and, but he was, he was too busy flirting with the Pope. So he let them, after all, he, he said, ah, it's just Mount Athos. Who's going to listen to them? So he didn't put much pressure on them. And then he died in 1972. Okay, after him came, yes, we know, patriarch Demetrius. And he looked at his diocese. And the only thing, really decent thing he had in his diocese was Manathos. But they don't commemorate him. So he said, in conjunction with the police and with the Greek government, you are going to go, starting from the southwest portion of Manathos, go from monastery to monastery with the police, with the soldiers, and you're going to go from monastery and say, we want you to commemorate Patriarch Demetrius. And if you don't commemorate, you're going to be expelled. And it was no noise throughout the Holy Mountain that this is now the new directive of the Patriarch who has jurisdiction over you. So, the zealot monks, those who had brains, those who <clears throat> would not commemorate a heretic, they had to leave. They would be expelled. And who was left? They would make a new abbot. And all of a sudden, the zealot monks from one monastery went to the next or went to the next. The police went to the next and cleaned out the monks who would not commemorate, took out the abbot, replaced him, and all those who would not commemorate the patriarch, the illustrious demonic, no, demonic, uh, Masonic patriarch Demetrius were thrown out of the monastery. So they went from monastery to monastery all around, and now they started on the north side. They went to Lavra, <clears throat> Vatopedi, uh, Eviron, all the big monasteries. They clean out the monks who would not commemorate. After all, they had the police. And where did they go? They all went either into the deserts, where no one's going to pay attention to them, and where even some of them commemorated our metropolitan Philorat. Yes. But those in the big monasteries, the last monastery on the north west side was a monastery called Esphigmenon. Yes, they all gathered those monks who had to live in an established big monastery. All the others, they could live in the skeets or whatever, and they did well there. <clears throat> but now Esphigmenon was filled all of them were non-commemorators. There's no one in Esphigmenon that wanted to commemorate. So the police came and they said, well, if we throw out 
everybody that doesn't want to commemorate, there won't be anybody left in the monastery. So, so they said, all right, just leave it alone. Besides, who cares? <clears throat> we got 19 of the 20 monasteries. 19 of them commemorate Demetrius. So they left Esigmenon alone. But they still put pressure on them. They still made life a little bit not normal. So much so that when we went there, we had to sneak on. Yeah, call it sneaking on. When we went there, we didn't go through the normal channels because the Patriarch of Constantinople has no authority, no authority over us because we're Orthodox and he is an ecumenist. Yeah, he's a heretic. What authority does he have over Orthodox people? especially a clergyman, zero. So, to get on to the Holy Mountain, we went to the northernmost port, got in our, our own little, little boat, and came on to the Holy Mountain, right to Esfigmenon. <clears throat> and here's a picture of us, right? This is a picture of Bishop John and I, going on the Holy Mountain and visiting Esfigmenon because if they knew that we were coming on to the Holy Mountain, uh, it, wouldn't be very, it wouldn't be very convenient for us, let us put it that way. This is how things lasted. Demetrius, the patriarch, died. But life was livable in Esfigmenon. We visited many times. The abbot was named Ephthemius. He loved us very much mm -hmm. because we were in the Russian church. We were confessing clergymen, just like he was and all the monks that he had. He had about 60 or 70 monks. Now they have over 100 monks there. When Abbot Ephthemius died, I guess the next one in seniority was named uh, Methodius. Now, he wasn't as zealous as his father. We told him when we went there to be sure he commemorates true bishops, true bishops. And if he does that, God will protect the monastery. Don't be hoodwinked by what's happening in Greece because the bishops in Greece are not zealous, are not very zealous for the faith. Now they officially do not commemorate any bishop so as to avoid further persecution by Bartholomew. So now, this is what happened this week. They're persecuting the monks of Esfigmenon. Who's persecuting? The patriarch. Oh yeah, Bartholomew. And this is <clears throat> from the official, uh, called the uh, Press of Greece. Bartholomew, good, they don't call him Patriarch Bartholomew. They call him Bartholomew has tightened the squeeze on Esfigmenon even more now than ever before. The abbot stated, among other things, that under Bartholomew's orders, all the lands and properties of Esfigmenon have been confiscated by Bartholomew's new Esfigmenon Brotherhood, who have built a structure near the old monastery. So this is how they plan to. Every monastery on Mount Athos has land adjacent to their monastery that they own. And this land provides for the monastery, for the brotherhood. So they established another brotherhood, and they called that brotherhood the Brotherhood of Esfigmenon. But where did it come from? So where did they come from? Bartholomew made, made it up to steal all the possessions and the real estate, if possible, from the real Esfigmenon. The real Esfigmenon has 110 monks. What did Bartholomew start? The illegitimate uh, Esfigmenon, 
Okay, how many monks do they have? They have two. Yes, you heard that correct. They have two monks who officially can and do and did steal all the possessions of the hundred monks of Esfigmenon because they are recognized by the patriarch, Bartholomew. You know, this man is evil. You know, St. Nicholas slapped Arius. And this patriarch, Bartholomew, he deserves to be slapped also. He's acting wickedly. He put up two monks and called them the monastery of Esfigmenon. And they have the right to steal all the property of the real monastery of Esfigmenon with, with over a hundred, over a hundred monks. How evil can a person be? And he's supposed to be a patriarch. What happened to love thy neighbors? How, what happened to love thine enemies? <clears throat> So, Esfigmenon has no income whatsoever because they have taken all their olive crop and whatever other crops they were producing in their lands because now all their lands have been taken over by Bartholomew's gangsters. They confiscated their tractor, the only means of trans transportation, because <clears throat> it was not registered in anyone's name privately, but it was common property of the monastery. So they said, no, we have a, we have a monastery over here, the Esfigmenon, the tractor belongs to them. The police says, yeah, they took the, mon and they took the tractor and gave it to them. Uh, there are six monks that are very old and sick and bent, without any medications, without any doctors visiting them, because the doctors are prevented from going to the monastery. It sounds like these people are ruthless. All visitors are blocked and turned back. The roads are blocked to the monastery. Uh, the visitors have provisions. They bring beans and, and bread and olives for their food only <clears throat> and in a very limited supply. Uh, they cannot go fishing because they confiscated their boats. They cannot go out of the monastery because they are blockaded. They cannot even drive anywhere because they cannot renew their driver's license plates of their private vehicles. They cannot get anything in the mail because anything that is addressed to Esfigmenon Monastery is taken by the other Bartholomew. Esfigmenon cronies, it says. The only way they can go out is to Yerisos, is the is a small village <clears throat> next to the monastery, which is outside the Holy Mountain. This is where we got our boat and came on to the Holy Mountain. <clears throat> so the only way they could go out is to this village by sneaking away and doing shopping in this village and uh, get the mail <clears throat> from the private post office of the abbot Methodius. Methodius said, Bartholomew wants to make all of us die. Those who read yesterday's statements by the ecumenical uh, patriarch regarding the holy monastery of Esfigmenos were astonished by Patriarch Bartholomew in a style inappropriate for his institutional role That's, and stated categorically his abhorrence at the choice of the Greek government to follow the peaceful path in resolving the case of the monastery of Esfigmenon. By choosing the bellicose, the violent solution of barbaric police intervention against us with whatever this may cost. <clears throat>
This was written November 12, 2023. The government wants to say, let's, let's go easy with this situation. Bartholomew said, no, send in the soldiers, the barbaric police, and just go beat them up, I guess. Did the mask finally fall off when at our neighboring footsteps at the time of writing of these lines, thousands of children and innocent people have been heavily priced of an unrelenting war which is still at the beginning when the wounds in Ukraine are multiplying and are still fresh when unfortunately we see two major wars in full swing and decimating societies, then it is more necessary than ever to raise our hands to the Most High and pray for peace to prevail, to remove all strife and vilification. So how scandalous is the incendiary statement of Patriarch Bartholomew, who disrespected these painful moments of pain, death, and blood experienced by our fellow human beings, asks, perhaps for the first time, so brutally and unshamedly, for our head on a platter. This is written by probably the abbot. Where are the usual speeches he likes to make about love? about tolerance, about protecting the weak, about defending rights, about safeguarding values. Where are they located? Where are they thrown in the trash basket? <clears throat> Where is the practical manifestation of this love through his long love talks that he found, that are found on the internet? Unfortunately, Patriarch Bartholomew's love is utilized to the protection of the ice in Antarctica. Uh, he talks about the Amazon forests, the green environment, and his frantic ecumenical practices, praying with everyone and everything. We thank the Greek government for showing greater spiritual maturity and then the ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew at this particular moment, and recognizing our right to live, a right that the patriarch relentlessly wants to take away from us. We call to attention all Manathos fathers that at the moment 110 monks are experiencing in the most inhumane way the hypocrisy and duplicity of the ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew. And we ask them to join us for the prevalence of justice and reasoning and respect for the human rights of our monks. Abbot of the Holy Monastery of Esvig Menon, of Manatos, Archimandrite Methodius, and the Brotherhood in Christ with him. Bartholomew wants the head of these monks. He can't stand that these hundred people don't commemorate him. It's just, it bothers him to no end. So Father Methodius brings up good points. Here, when people are showing no mercy, like the Jews in Palestine, they're killing so many innocent people. When the Ukrainian government cares no whit about how many people they send to be slaughtered in the front lines of the Ukrainian-Russian war. There's no, there's no remorse how many people have died to, to, a, to a war that didn't have to, didn't have to happen. And so now... Bartholomew, the Patriarch of Constantinople, shows no mercy also upon the poor monks of Mount Athos. Block their roads, block their <clears throat> access to food, block their roads, block... What kind of a Christian is this? Oh, yes. 
we know what kind of Christian is. He's a heretical Christian. So they have no fear of God. So they want these monks to capitulate. Just mention the patriarch in the liturgy and you'll be okay as far as we're concerned. Just mention Patriarch Bartholomew in the liturgy. For after all, look at all the other monasteries on the holy mountains. They all mention the Patriarch. What makes you think that you're different? What makes you think <clears throat> that you can get away from not mentioning Patriarch Bartholomew? And the answer is because he's a heretic. You are not allowed to commemorate a heretic in the liturgy. Have you people forgot what happens to the monks of Mount Athos in when? Uh, the 1300s? When they commemorated a heretic and their bodies after their repose did not decompose and they had to put the bodies of those who commemorated the heretic, that is the Pope, in a separate hidden place so people would not look at it. It's called the unholy dead. They all know this. The place still exists there because you're not supposed to commemorate. God is not pleased at all. In fact, <laughs> it's a blasphemy to commemorate someone in the liturgy that's not orthodox. But they want them to commemorate. Commemorate the patriarch. And then you could get food, you could get water, you could have access to your car. You could have access <clears throat> to the rest of the Holy Mountain. You could have boats that could go out. You can go fishing. You can do it. Just commemorate the Patriarch. And these fathers say, no, we're not. Oh, yeah, there's been some other <clears throat> news lately. Bartholomew. Yes, this Patriarch has said recently, <clears throat> by the way, on December 18th, 2023, printed in Orthodox Times, Monday, Bartholomew has proclaimed, quote, we proclaim in every direction. What kind of, what kind of talk is this? We proclaim in every direction that Constantinople is the genuine and only mother church. Oh, so they've taken the name genuine? They don't know why we took the name genuine. When you say genuine, that implies there's some that are not genuine. And that's Bartholomew and world orthodoxy. When we say we are the genuine orthodox church, that's implying the others are not genuine. So Bartholomew says, we proclaim in every direction that Constantinople is the genuine, the only mother church. Well, what happened to ecumenism? Oh, what happened to all the statements that the ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew has made ever since he became patriarch and accepted the, the statements of Athenagoras in Demetrius? Uh, he says, as the humble successors by the grace of God to these traditions, we vow to safeguard the sacred, this sacred trust that they are the genuine Orthodox Church. Really? Why do you think this book was printed called The Kiss of Judas? Because you kissed your sacred trust and betrayed it and threw it out the window. Bartholomew says, we refuse to relinquish the sacred duty and responsibility entrusted to us, which we have relinquished every day of their life. We do not relinquish the mantle of the mother of the great church, the role passed down to us in blood. We are committed to passing it on unscathed and unaltered, complete baloney. Oh, hypocrites. For 32 years, Bartholomew says, and into the future, 
we embrace the task of joys, joyously, joyously in service to the most holy Theotokos, in keeping the faith? Are you serious? Why? What, what's, what has happened to Bartholomew? On the one hand, he wants to punish those monks who criticize him for abandoning the genuine characteristic of the Orthodox Church, right? They don't want to commemorate him because he's abandoned his requirements to be a confessor. And yet he wants to continue with the ecumenical movement and say that we all worship the same God. We all worship the same God, no matter what you called him. <clears throat> he said it publicly. We have the same Heavenly Father, whatever we call him. And as being his... We of all religions children. have the same Heavenly Father. Of course, God is but one. Uh, independently on the name uh, we give him, uh, Allah or, or uh, Yahweh, right. and so on. He said he will never renounce the path of his predecessors, Athenagoras and Demetrius. Even though they have an evil death, he's willing to follow in their footsteps. Crazy. This is the world we live in. What a shame. Let's hope the Greek government doesn't use force to take these hapless monks out of Esphigmenon. I think that's all for today. <clears throat> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you for being with us. Oh.